Well, cold and flu season has finally uh, taken over our family as well. There is no escaping it. It is early February, so you're bound to catch something. And um, with all these viruses going around, there's really nothing you can do except to keep boosting your immune system to make sure that it is as strong as it is so that it can just basically fight the virus is uh, the quickest possible. So the best thing I could do for myself at this point and also for my family is harvest some of these real fresh vegetables that we still have growing in the ground or at least stored away and make sure that we are getting as many nutrients and um, minerals <laughs> and vitamins into our bodies so that we can recover as quickly as possible. So this morning is one of the nicest mornings we've had in a long while. There's even a bit of hazy sunshine out there. But yeah, the wind is really wicked. I, otherwise I'd love to be out now gardening, even doing a bit of weeding, anything, these kind of calm jobs that you can do, that you don't over exhaust yourself. And even though being outside in the fresh air is actually really beneficial for you, if you're sick and if you have any kind of head colds. But I am sheltering inside this greenhouse because the wind is very dangerous. So at the moment as well, it's very gusty and it's cold, it's a cold breeze. So I have a good soft shell jacket on that just keeps the breeze away from me. But packets of tissues constantly nearby. I still have some carrots inside of this bed. Oh, and the slugs are having a field day under this cover. But I just wanted to protect them from the hardest of frosts and cold and rain, I suppose. Yeah, there's the first one straight away split. But they're lovely. This metal raised bed has given us wonderful staggered carrot harvests again and again and again. And I only sowed here once, I believe it was just this March or April last year, obviously last spring. And I think they were Nantes uh, variety carrots, but they are just stunning. And I can see the cold that we had has not done any damage to them. So I better clean them up. And the wind is just so bad, so bad. Now, this bed looks totally empty, but there actually are some um, parsnips in here that germinated. So there are just the smallest of hints of um, foliage <laughs> coming through the surface, and they're tiny, but they can still make a lovely roast. I genuinely wouldn't have thought anything germinated in this bed until I started to see these tiny little um, shoots of um, growth. And there's tons of cotworm inside this planter. They just love the undisturbed soil. So no dig is very beneficial for cutworms. And the cutworms is something you don't want because they do damage your crops. They do eat into them. But unfortunately, it's just one of these things that we have to deal with. Now, what are you inside here? Slugs. Oh, there's a big one there in the corner. Oh. That's a monster, just quietly growing away in the corner. <laughs> that looks like an alien. That's a big parsnip.
No, it is absolutely fantastic to be coming like this from bed to bed and just harvest a bit from here and a bit from there. Now, this is not the biggest or strongest looking celeriacs, but it is a celeriac nevertheless. And again, it has a lot of nutrients in it. So this will go towards our roast. I'm going to harvest two of the sweets from here as well, even though I have mentioned before that I am worried in case it's gone too tough. But even if, it, if they have gone too tough, I will, um, I will cook it and mash it, like boil it and mash it for the hens because uh, they need a little bit more nutrients at this time of the year as well. Then on the south facing side of the greenhouse, uh, the same side where I would have had the oka and masho pots as well, I have this metal planter that's still full of leeks and some uh, global onions as well. So leeks, another great food source. And it has plenty of nutrients in it. It took about five of them. Um, nice clean looking um, shoots. Now we also have some potatoes. I took the bucket number nine. So that must be Santa Mira. I think it's Santa Mira. Nine and ten. I think so. <laughs> So we have a few in here, I can see. Oh, hi. oh, they're nice. That's a proper main crop potato size now. <laughs> what are these? <laughs> like two people. But there isn't enough of it in here. There's a couple of nice tubers, but as in, doesn't seem like there's a good quantity of them. If I remember correctly, the other bucket of Sarpamira didn't give a great return either. They are the seed potatoes, the two original ones. At least, there, at least there's a couple of like decent sized ones. Yeah, Aran Victory definitely has been the winner so far from the sheer quantity and volume of potatoes we got, um, considering the wet summer and blight infested summer uh, or the season. So um, obviously <laughs> there was a terrible uh, potato season across Ireland last year. And um, Sarpamira, even though blight resistant all that, but look, I d still have a bit of a harvest out of it. There is also one vegetable spice that I've been growing that I haven't harvested yet and it's well known for its immune boosting benefits and that is ginger. So I am also going to be harvesting uh, ginger today and I'm going to refresh the soil and just repot some of um, the rhizomes again to keep that cycle going. Even though ginger cannot be necessarily consumed by everybody because it's, it's side effects, I suppose, to or health implications to some people, it is still one of the best roots out there that is anti-inflammatory, full of antioxidants, immune um, boosting benefits. Come on, come on in, come on in. Yeah, the rain. Yeah, what about all this rain? Oh, 
Oh, much nicer now. Well, this rain was not supposed to start until later in the afternoon. And after washing the vegetables as well, I think a better wash station might be on agenda for this year. I was using these sticky traps for the white fly in the living room and um, yeah they've been able to capture a lot of them. Now as you see obviously there's plenty of green still on the ginger but there have been a couple of stems that I've taken off because they went brown and they rotted off. And obviously these are the supports I was using just to hold the, the stems upright. So let's see what's actually inside of it. But the stems and the leaves themselves are absolutely delicious smelling. Very potent. But they're actually smelling gorgeous as well. <laughs> One rise on broke off already. The soil is still really nice and moist. It just it doesn't like to be waterlogged. And what I want to do is I want to harvest a lot of the older um, rhizomes off it and then I'm going to replant them back in the pot with a fresh compost and I'll start the cycle all over again. I really hope you can't hear the wind and rain as much as I can in here. It is so noisy. So I have two proper growing with big sets of roots on them of um, the chunks of rhizomes. And then I also have these two that came off straight away. So they are definitely to be eaten. but I do want to just pot up some of them. Now, the previous times when I've harvested ginger, I never had these enlarged growths at the end of the roots. And as far as I've been trying to get an answer what they are, are they edible? Should I keep them? I don't know. Actually, I haven't come across them, so I do have to do more research on that. But yeah, I have a lot of them on the other one as well. But yeah, I'm thinking I'll only pot one of them up and the other one, again, we're going to harvest and eat. But yeah, I have to look into those, what they are. And this time I did actually fill the pot up way more than I had it previously because I could just feel how deep down these roots had gone. So I'm sure it will only benefit the plant if I brought more soil now into this pot. So I popped all the roots and everything into the soil and I suppose the rhizome part of it, it's about an inch below the soil level. It will soon push through it though. And back into the house it will go and I'll water it in as well. 